Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture actually I will continue with the more representation theory uh, because uh, we still have not uh, defined some of the important objects uh, that one can actually create in the representation theory. So, before that uh, I will actually recall what we were doing in the last uh, uh, lecture ok. I made a very simple uh, calculation mistake I will rectify that now. So, we defined uh, characters for this SL2 representations. So, if you recall, uh, so what is uh, character? So, you start with V being finite dimensional representation of SL2C. So, we talked about H character. So, we are simply just a character. So, the character of V is defined to be you write V first of all direct sum of V gamma where gamma coming from each at where V gamma is nothing but the gamma eigen space ok. So, those vector in V such that H V is nothing but gamma V. So, then so the character of V actually keep tracks of uh, which gamma appear here in this uh, Eigen values and as well as the dimension of this V gammas. So, in particularly so this is the character of V is uh, the sum of dimension V gamma times x power gamma where gamma is coming from each end. And it is a fact that uh, this is actually element of the Laurent polynomial ring ok. So, one can actually restrict to each end not a problem, but uh, as well as you can see that one can think it as a element of this Laurent polynomial polynomials over complex numbers as well. So, then uh, we try to actually compute uh, what is the character of uh, this Vd. So, I wanted to actually simplify that. So, let, let me again do it. So, if I take this char character of this Vd where Vd is a given finite dimensional irreducible representation ok. So, then we know that this Vd has this basis. So, the Vd has this basis V0 etcetera v, Vd and uh, the corresponding h eigen values will be d ok let me write some more terms. So, this is v naught v 1 etcetera v d minus 1 v d. So, then the corresponding eigen values will be uh, v naught will have d v 1 will have d minus 2 and so on minus d plus 2 and then minus d. So, these are all the H eigen values of these eigen vectors V naught etcetera V d which is of basis of capital V d. So, then it is clear that the character of V d is nothing but because all these uh, eigen spaces are one dimensional. So, this uh, character of V d is nothing but x power d plus x power d minus 2 plus etcetera plus x power minus d plus 2 plus x power minus d. So, in particularly what we can do? We can take out x power minus d that is what we did last time also. The character of V d becomes x power minus d times 1 sorry x power 2 d plus x power uh, 2 d minus 2. So, this is t minus 1 plus etcetera plus x square plus 1 ok. So, that is what we got. So, now recall the formula that x power minus 1 uh, divided by x minus 1 is given to be 1 plus x plus etcetera plus x power n minus 1. So, now using this identity we can again simplify this character of V d. So, if you simplify further then what do you get? This is x power minus t times so x power 2 d minus 1 divided by x square minus 1. So, you put x square to be y then this is what you get ok. So, now you can see that so this is same as equal to character of V d. So, this is equal to x power d minus x power minus d divided by x square minus 1. So, now you multiply and divided by x power minus 1 both sides. So, in the numerator and the denominator then what do you get? You get it is exactly equal to x power d minus 1 minus sorry. So, here so this is starting with x power 2 d. 
So, this has to be plus ok. So, I am again made a mistake. So, let me just rewrite. So, this is going to be x power 2 d plus 1 minus 1 divided by x square minus 1. So, if you multiply by x power minus d, then this is x power d plus 2 minus x power minus d. So, divided by x square minus 1. So, now you multiply by x power minus 1 and then divide by x power minus 1, then we get x power character of v d to be x power d plus 1 minus x power minus d plus 1 divided by x minus x inverse. Okay. So, this is somewhat some better form of writing the character of v power d is nothing but x power d plus 1 minus x power minus d plus 1 divided by x minus x 1. So, later this kind of expressions will appear in many places. Okay. So, these are all actually kind of quantum integers, but anyway let us not get into that. So, but the character of V d it has some very nice formula like this. So, that is where I stopped last time. So, now what we do we will continue uh, with the uh, SL2 representation theory and then we will see like uh, so, what will be the procedure uh, to decompose given finite dimensional representation into smaller uh, or irreducible finite dimensional representation of SL2. Okay. So, for that we start with let us say V which is a finite dimensional uh, representation of SL2C. So, if you think about it suppose if you can uh, write already V as Okay, some direct sum of uh, this irreducible representation. So, then what you can do you can actually group all the representation they are isomorphic. Okay. So, then each irreducible representation will appear in the decomposition of V with respect to some multiplicity. For example, that multiplicity you can get it from by computing the character. Okay. So, first you write some V D1 and let us say this appears n 1 times. So, this is the notation. So, this means so v of d direct sum sum n means just v of d direct sum n number of times. So, here n number of times we are adding. So, if you use this notation then it is clear that using Wiles theorem this v can be written as v of d 1 direct sum n 1 direct sum etcetera direct sum v of some dr direct sum nr. So, we have grouped isomorphic copies. So, that means we can assume that this d1 and dr all are distinct. So, since we are talking about uh, this uh, non-negative integers, so we can order them so that we can assume that d1 is bigger than etcetera bigger than dr. So, it is in the decreasing order. Okay. So, this is the assumption that we can make. So, in particularly if you compute the character, the character of V will be exactly equal to n 1 times the character of V d 1 plus etcetera plus n r times character of V d r. Okay. So, this is what we get. So, now if you think about it, how are we going to get the top component? Okay. So, once we actually understand what how to pick this top components, so then it is more or less clear how you go about uh, picking the other components. Okay. So, for that, so let us look at what is really happening here in this uh, decomposition. Okay. If I take this copy of this V D 1, so then you can see that, so there will be just some copies here, okay, V D 1, etcetera, V D 1. So, then each copy actually will contribute to H eigenspaces. So, even though eigenspaces of V d's are one dimensional, but we have taken multiple copies of them. So, so even not only that, so there are some com 
contribution that can occur from some V D lower than this D 1 also. Okay. So, in particularly what I am trying to say if you look at this capital V and then if you look at some gamma the gamma eigenspace okay, H eigenspace of this V then you get contribution of this uh, gamma eigenspace from all these V D i's. Okay. So, now these gammas because they are all coming from the Eigen values of this V D i's and this V D s in some sense they are all ordered. Okay. You can see that first we have written V D 1 and then we, we have written V D 2 and so on we have written V D r. So, they are all in the decreasing order, but if you focus on only this V D 1 etcetera V D n. So, how it looks like? So, it looks like so so the d1 space okay for example it will have all one dimensional okay so then depending upon the number of copies so you will get uh, that many one dimensional d1 eigen spaces okay so corresponding to d1 d1 eigen value so now so this is how many copies are there there are n one copies so that many uh, things that we will get have. So, for simplicity let us assume r equal to 2. So, I will try to explain what is happening in r equal to 2 that more or less explains everything else. So, now if you go to v d 2 so then what will happen? So, this d 1 definitely greater than d 2. So, the d 2 will appear somewhere here. Okay. So, this d 2 will be here. So, this is v d 2 and so on v d 2. So, this is how many copies there are n 2 copies of them. Okay. So, now if you think about it this v d 1 will actually contribute something like this. So, I can actually represent it using this uh, rectangle. So, where the first two box corresponding to Eigen values d 1. So, these are those are all the top Eigen spaces okay, inside this v d 1 etcetera v d 1. So, now each box will contribute to one dimensional uh, Eigen space for the V D 1. So, this is V D 1. Now, what will be the next? The next one will be V D 1 minus 2. So, that will be just below this. So, that is just uh, again you will get uh, N 1 copies of that uh, D 1 minus 2. So, then you can go and so on then you reach V D minus 1. So, then this will be the least Eigen value because this d 1 is max. So, minus d 1 will be the minimum. So, that will give you some box here. Okay. So, this is will be your corresponding to minus d 1. Now, if you go to v d 2 etcetera v d 2. So, d 2 will appear somewhere in the uh, below d 1 okay, wherever it is does not matter. For example, if d 2 can be obtained from d 1 by subtracting this uh, even number. So, then this d 2 will match with one of this d 1 minus 2 i. Okay. So, in that case it will actually match with this box here. So, let us say this is d 1 minus 2 i. Okay. So, in case d 1 minus 2 i is equal to d 2 then whatever we are getting here it will match up with this. Okay. Similarly, so, then it will go all the way up to only that uh, minus d 2 okay, like this. So, this will be like minus d 2. So, each copies is going to give us so this one uh, column and then you if you read it from the row. So, then we will be able to calculate the dimension of this uh, d 1 minus 2 i dimensional Eigen space. Of course, this is this picture is true only for 
when d2 is obtained from d1 by subtracting some even number. If this is not the case, then what will happen? The picture will look something like this. You will have uh, first this uh, d1, etc., d1, okay, something like this. So, this is how the d1 copies will look. So, this is d1 and this is d1 minus 2 and this is minus d1 and so on. So, this is v d1 and then this is v d1 and there are n 1 copies. So, now let us say d1 minus 2 i is not equal to d2. So, that means the parity differs. If the parity differs, so it is not going to be exactly hitting this d1 minus 2 i. So, then what will happen? So, so basically th there is a mismatch. So, when you take that d2, so d2 will lie somewhere here, okay, but it will not contribute to uh, that uh, values of this d1 minus 2 i. So, but it will just stay here, okay. but they are all having different parities. Okay. This is v d 2, v d 2 and here you have n 2 copies okay. and then here this is the d 2 and then this is minus d 2 and then you go like d 2 minus 2 and so on and then minus d 2 plus d 2. So, there would not be any like these two figures cannot match like here, okay. here this is matching, okay, but here it cannot match. So, then you can see that the contribution of the d 2 dimensional sorry uh, the contribution of uh, d 2 Eigen space uh, inside capital V will be same as just this n 2 copies. Okay. Sorry, D2. So, this is like what we are observing. For example, if you are interested in picking up okay, the top component Vd1, so then all you need to do is just calculate the dimension of Vd1. Okay. So, the number of copies N1 is going to be dimension of Vd1. So, now what will be the number of uh, copies v d 2 okay, v d 2. So, in case if there is a matching, okay, so that means d 1 minus 2 i is becoming equal to d 2. So, then so there is a contribution of this d 1 minus 2 i that Eigen space coming from this v d 1 etcetera v d n and similarly contribution again there is another contribution here okay, coming from this v d 2 etcetera v d 2. So, that means the dimension of v d 2 will become exactly equal to n 1 plus n 2. Okay. This is in case d 1 minus 2 i is equal to d 2. So, then how do you recover n 2. So, you just recover it by subtracting v d 2 from v d 1. Okay. So, now what happens if they do not match? So, in case if they do not match if d 1 minus 2 i is not equal to d 2. So, this is equivalent to saying d 1 is not concurrent to d 2 modulo 2. So, in this case we will not have any contribution for this v d 2 from uh, this uh, copies of v d 1. Okay. So, in this case you can see that there is no contribution. of v d 1 in 
the eigen space v v power d 2. Okay, so, that means, n 2 will exactly be equal to dimension of v d 2. Okay. So, this is this is how you recover. So, by knowing what will be the parity match and so on. So, this is actually you can repeat for for other other copies as well. Okay. So, in case if you are interested in capturing the topmost copy, so then what you do? You just compute the dimension of this d1 eigen space. Okay h eigen space. So, corresponding to the eigen value d 1. So, that is this. So, then the dimension of that will, will give you exactly how many copies are there. So, when you come to d 2 you need to be careful sometimes this d 2 can be equal to d 1 minus 2 i. In that case you have to subtract this dimension of d 1 from the dimension of d 1 sorry this is uh, not dimension of d 1. So, which is exactly n 1 yeah. So, in case so this is uh, just n 1 from this dimension of v d 2 ok because n 1 plus n 2 will give you the dimension of v d 1 minus 2 i which is d 2. But if there is no matching like that means the parities are different then just a dimension of v d 2 will give you just a n 2 ok. So, now it is clear like how to get t's number of components from by knowing the dimension of this uh, this uh, h eigen spaces of capital V. Sometimes that is easy to calculate ok in some sense that is what we are recording inside the character V. Okay. So, character V contains all this data. So, this contains all these data that we are talking about that we need at to recover the multiplicities, those n i's are called multiplicities. d d i inside capital V. So, this is very very important observation ok. This observation is actually telling us how to decompose given capital V knowing the character how to decompose capital V into direct sum of this uh, irreducible representations. So, now like to, to get more hand on this one should actually do lots of examples ok. Maybe I will leave it to you to check uh, one of the important uh, uh, example ok. So, I leave it as exercise maybe you can do the calculation and then see what happens. So, SL 2 C so naturally sits inside SL 3 C ok. So, how it sits you can take it to be this 3 by 3 matrices and then take star 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 and then 0 0 elsewhere ok. So, this is sitting inside S L 3 C and it is naturally isomorphic to S L 2 C. So, in particularly using this uh, natural identification you can make S L 2 act on S L 3 ok. So, in particularly this is finite dimensional S L 2 module. So, you can try to compute what will be the decomposition of this finite dimensional module. So, compute the decomposition of S L 3 ok, treat it as S L 2 module as above. Okay, so, this is something uh, I am not doing I expect you to do. 
So, now uh, we will actually see some interesting construction of uh, representations from old representations. So, that that is actually going to give us uh, many many interesting way of creating representations okay, from known representations. So, we already seen what is called this uh, direct sum. Okay. So, otherwise I will just uh, recall. So, what is direct sum? So, if I give you two representation let us say V1 and V2. So, given these two representation now you can assume it to be this is just a G representation not necessarily SL2 representation okay, where G is Lie algebra. Now, given these two representation we just want to construct what is this called this direct sum. So, the direct sum as a vector space this is just uh, all this Cartesian product. So, x is coming from v1 and y is coming from v2. Then the action of this uh, g given to be so you start with uh, some element g in g okay so then g of this xy is given to be just gx comma gy okay and i will leave it to you to check this is actually defines action of g on v1 direct sum v2 and this makes what is called this direct sum okay so direct sum of 2G representation is again a represent G representation. So, this is not very hard to see. So, now we have what is called dual. So, this is very, very, very important uh, concept, okay, dual representation. So, what is dual representation? Again, you start with V, which is G representation. So, then we can construct this dual space, which is home V, comma C. So, all functionals from V to C. So, again you take it to be over complex numbers. So, what is this? This is set of all linear transformation from V to C. T is C linear. We know that this is a vector space. Now, what is given? G is acting on this capital V. Now, using this action, we are going to define action of G on this V star. So, how it is defined? you take x in g and then theta in v star. So, to define what is x dot theta we need to tell how that x dot theta acts on some given element v in capital V. So, you take v in capital V. So, for all this data then you define x dot theta to be just acting on v to be as follows minus theta x dot v. Okay, and this is true for all x, theta and v. So, now I will check, okay, this is the only thing I will check. Uh, this is going to give us actually representation, g representation. So, what we need to check? So, we need to check that this is actually linear in both these variables. Okay, All those things I will actually leave it to you to check. So, basically what we have defined, we have defined this uh, phi star okay, from G to this uh, GL of V star okay, where phi is given to be G to GL of V. Then how we define this phi star? Phi star of X is acting on V star to V star where X takes theta to v star of x of theta is nothing but this x dot theta. So, this x dot theta defined to be x dot theta of v equal to minus theta of x dot for all v in. So, that is how we have defined and this is if you think about it this is minus theta phi of x v. Okay. So, now we want to verify this is indeed actually uh, representation for that we need to verify this phi is linear. So, I will leave it to you to check that. So, only non-trivial part we need to check it is a Lie homomorphism. So, for that you can see that why it is a linear uh, sorry Lie homomorphism. 
So, if you take this bracket x y and then act it on theta, so we need to prove that this is exactly equal to x dot y dot theta minus y dot x dot theta. Okay. In other words, what is on the left hand side? Left hand side is bracket x y applied on theta and then you are just applying on some vector v. Then you get minus theta x y acting on this v. But this is because this bracket x y acting on v that is actually representation. So, you get minus theta x dot y dot v minus y dot x dot v. Okay. And this is true for all v in v. So, that means what you are getting? You are getting uh, this is exactly equal to minus theta x dot y dot v plus theta y dot x dot v. Okay. This is what on the left hand side. So, we need to verify this is what you get on the right hand side. So, let us look at what is on the right hand side. So, you take x dot y dot theta. So, just take the first term, the first term, then apply it on v and then see what happens. x dot y dot theta applied on v, then it is going to give you. So, first you want to think this as some theta dash. Okay. So, basically you think like this x dot theta dash on v, where theta dash is y dot theta okay? because this is again a functional. So, then you can see that this is by definition uh, this is minus theta dash x dot v. Okay? But you can go back and then see what is theta dash, theta dash is y dot theta. So, that is going to give me minus y dot theta applied on this new element x dot v. So, then it is going to give me another minus. So, then this is minus. So, the minus minus it will get cancelled then theta y dot x dot v. So, the x dot y dot theta applied on v is going to give me this okay, for all v and v. Similarly, if you compute y dot x dot theta applied on v, then you get first so, you keep this y dot and then you take it to be the text dot inside, sorry you keep x dot, yeah this is your theta dash. So, x dot theta minus y dot v. So, then the minus again another minus will pop up. So, that is going to cancel. So, theta of x dot y dot v. So, that is what you get. So, now what will be on the right hand side? So, that is the difference of these two. So, that is the difference of these two is theta of y dot x dot v minus theta of x dot y dot v. So, if you go back to the right hand side, so that is what we have theta of y dot x dot v. So, that is the first term and the second term is this minus theta x dot y dot v. So, that is what we have here. So, that proves left hand side is same as right hand side. Okay. So, that makes this phi star which we have defined is a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, that means v star is indeed representation for g. So, now we have another very interesting uh, representation called tensor product. So, if you have not seen the concept of tensor product, I urge you to go and uh, look at it. Okay. For example, Dummington foot will be a very good reference uh, for tensor products. Okay. So, I just I am going to assume that you are all very familiar with the notion of tensor product and I am going to just work with that assumption. So, what is tensor product? Okay. If I give you V and W, so these two are two G representations, then I can actually talk about this V tensor W over C. So, note that, so this will be span of over C, all this what is called simple tensors, V tensor W where V is coming from capital V and W is coming from capital W. Okay. 
and of course tensor product is defined using some universal property and so on. So I urge you to actually go back and then see what is that universal property and then how one can construct basis of this tensor product using the basis of capital V and capital W and so on which I am not going to do in this course. So now what we are going to do we are going to actually define. So these two are given to be G representation. So we are going to define the yeah, action of G on this V tensor W. How it is defined? So you take X in G and then V in V and W in W. Okay. For this data you just define X dot V tensor W to be it is now defined using what is called this this product rule x v tensor w plus v tensor x w. Okay. So, now once you have defined this for simple uh, tensors then it is easy to extend this linearly to entire entire tensor product okay. because any typical element will look like uh, finite sum of these simple tensors. Okay. So, now it is easy to actually check this is actually indeed uh, gives you uh, G action on this uh, V tensor W. So, maybe I will leave it to you to check. Okay. So, here is the checking part check V tensor W over C is again G representation using this term. Okay. So, now we have another important space okay, which is the home space. Okay. This is home of representations. So, this is again very important uh, concept. But uh, if you know dual and tensor, it is easy to actually get back home. Okay, there is no uh, problem. But anyway, let me define what is this home representation. So let's say V and W, they are given to be two representations of G. Okay. So then one can consider what is called this home space. So that is set of all linear maps. Okay, set of all linear maps from v to w where t is c linear. So, again we know lots of information about this home space. Okay. So, for example, one can construct the basis of this home space using the basis of v and w. Okay. I will let you to think about all this. So, now how one going to define uh, this uh, action of g on this uh, home v comma w using the action of g on v and w. So, that is defined as follows. So, if I take x dot theta where x is coming from g and theta is coming from this home okay, for all this. So, because theta is actually mapped from v to w. So, I have to say that how it acts this x dot theta acts on this capital V. So, for this data what is x dot theta of v? So, that is given to me x dot theta of v okay, because theta of v is an element of w, we have the action of x on theta of v. So, then you subtract theta of x dot v. So, that is your definition. Okay. So, this is your definition of sorry this x dot theta that is acting on this V. So, if you take this definition then I will encourage you to check that uh, this home space is again becomes G representation. So, home V comma W is again G representation using this double star. Okay, at least once you should check this these facts in your lifetime. Okay. So, these are all the facts once you check and then you will never check again. So, I will uh, urge you to check these facts. Okay. So, now 
we have this natural isomorphism between this uh, V tensor W star and then home V comma W. So, note that uh, these uh, two spaces have same dimension okay, because they have same dimension. So, if you are working with only finite dimensional spaces, so then these spaces must be isomorphic as vector spaces because dimension of both these spaces are the product of the dimension because dimension of the dual is dimension of the space. So, the product actually is giving you the dimension. So, that means there is some isomorphism, but what I am saying there is a natural isomorphism between these two. Okay. So, I actually kind of uh, like uh, leave it to you to find out that natural isomorphism and then using that natural isomorphism you can prove that. So, this is indeed isomorphic to so, okay, the isomorphism should be like this. I will leave it to you to check this isomorphism indeed G module isomorphism if you start with V and W are G modules. So, this is G module isomorphism. Okay. For example, when W C then you get V star sensor C, so which is isomorphic to V star. So, that is exactly equal to isomorphy to home V comma C. Okay. This is the way to remember where to put dual. So, this is again I will leave it as exercise. It is very interesting exercise. Once you figure out how to define the G action here and because there is a G action here you can see that indeed the G action of this home space coming from the G action of this V star tensor W because you already have G action on V star and then you have defined G action on W. Now, using this natural isomorphism between these two spaces one can define G action on this home V comma W. So, that is the action indeed we have defined here in this double star. Okay. So, that is all like direct computations you can actually do and then uh, verify. So, I am not going to do so, this is all like uh, about uh, general construction of uh, modules from the known modules. Okay. Of course, you can always uh, think about like uh, various sub modules and then the quotient modules and so on. They are also some way of producing uh, new modules from the given modules. Okay. So, once uh, we have constructed all this uh, then we can ask this following natural questions for SL2. For example, so what you can do? So, you can take this VD okay, and then you can actually look at this to do well. Okay. So, the very first exercise prove that this VD star is again irreducible. Okay because it is irreducible. So, V d star must be isomorphic to some V of something. Okay. So, I just like let it let you to figure out what will be that something. Okay. This is going to be again some natural number okay. and then you just figure out what should be that natural number sorry uh, non-negative integer. So, the second question, so if I if once we have this uh, tensor product, okay, so then it is uh, immediately one can construct tensor product of two different irreducible modules. Okay. So, for example, you can take V n tensor V m for given n and m coming from which at plus. Okay. So, this is finite dimensional representation of SL 2 C. So, the very first exercise you can prove that this is irreducible if and only if one of this n and m must be 0. Okay. So, this is irreducible if and only if the product is 0. So, indeed if you take n to be 0 then it corresponds to V 0. 
but V0 dimension will be D plus 1, so 0 plus 1, so it is 1 dimensional. So it is isomorphic to just to that uh, complex numbers or the trivial module. So if you take trivial module tensor with Vm, you will, you will be getting actually the same module, okay. This is uh, inbuilt exercise. If you take Vm tensor with V0, then you get Vm again. This is true for all M, okay. And it is not hard to see that V tensor W will be isomorphic to W tensor V as G representations, okay. So this is again I will leave it to you to think about because uh, what is the natural map you can just take this simple tensor V W and then send it to the, the switch, okay, switching those two elements. W tensor V, okay. So this is actually even to get this map, okay. So this is you are going to define it on simple tensor, but you you want to define this on the entire space, okay. For that you can't just start with this map and then extend linearly to V tensor W, because this simple tensor they don't form a basis. Okay, they are just spanning set and when you allow V, W to be like any elements then definitely you are over counting. So, so definitely it will not become a basis. So you have to think about how to make sense of this map, okay. That I will leave it to you to think about it. But this V tensor W is naturally isomorphic to W tensor V. So now uh, using this you can see that V of M tensor V of 0 is isomorphic to V of 0 tensor V of M which is isomorphic to V of M, okay. So that is why whenever N M and 0 you get this is irreducible. So in all other cases when one of them are both of them are non-trivial then we will never get it to be irreducible, okay. Indeed uh, we have this very explicit uh, formula to decompose this V of N tensor V of M. So the formula is read as follows. So if you decompose this, then this is isomorphic to, so V of M plus N direct sum, etc. direct sum V of mod M minus N, okay. So each this V of M plus N, etc. V of mod M minus N occur only once, okay, the multiplicity of these modules are 1 and exactly these modules will occur in this uh, tensor, okay. This is actually very, very, very interesting exercise. So one can do this in uh, many ways. For example, one can do this at the level of character as well. We know what is the character of V of N. Character of V of N is nothing but x power N plus 1 minus x power minus N plus 1 divided by x minus x minus x inverse. So now what do you do? You just multiply these two and then uh, try to actually group them together then you will get uh, what is on the right hand side. So this is also you can write it as x power n plus etc plus x power minus n. Basically if you take uh, okay this is something I have not told but anyway this is again another exercise you can take it to be. So the character of V tensor W, so like in let us take V W to be just SL2 modules. The character as predicted, the character of V tensor W will be just the product of the character. So that it will be character of V times character of W. So this is just a simple uh, proof because we are talking about only one uh, I, I can uh, sorry, eigenspaces corresponding to only one operator. For example, if you take this V tensor W gamma, so which is the gamma eigenspace, then you can see that this will be just a sum of all these eigenspaces V gamma dash tensor, okay, V gamma double dash, where gamma dash plus gamma double dash will be exactly gamma. So, in particularly the dimension of this space V tensor W gamma 
will be equal to summation dimension of this v gamma dash times dimension of v gamma double dash. So, indeed that is what you use in order to prove this product formula. Okay. So, check this and then using this you can you can get immediately this. Okay, I will I will stop here with this all exercises. So, unless you revise uh, the notion of tensor products, uh, so these exercises will become actually very difficult for you. So, I recommend you to actually revise the notion of tensor products and then using that you can do all these exercises. Okay. So, I will continue in the last lecture with the cotton criteria for solubility and semi-simplicity. So, those are very, very important concepts. Like I said, to prove those uh, theorems, we need to actually revise what is called this jordan chevalier decomposition. So, I will uh, lecture on that. I will add it as appendix. Okay, You can actually go through that, not a problem. Thank you.